In this video, we're going to go over relative frequency. So this is going to be something that is, you know, giving us an understanding of how often things can occur, will occur, and, you know, may potentially occur, right? So let's go ahead and jump into relative frequency. So when you toss a coin, there is an equal chance of heads or tails, right? Very, very simple. When you have a coin that has heads or tails, right? It's very simple for us just to flip it and get one or the other, you know, as far as it coming out, you know, heads or tails, right? Very, very simple. But in some cases, instead of using equally likely outcomes, you need to use relative frequency. And so in an experiment or survey, relative frequency of an event is the number of times the event occurs divided by the total number of trials. So let's look at some examples here or an example of a particular car, right? So let's say, for example, you saw 100 passing cars, right? And found that 23 of them were red. And so the relative frequency would be 23 out of 100, right? Very, very simple, very easy for us to understand. Now, let's look at the bag of candy there. So the bag of candy contains three red candy and seven blue candy, right? You can see that obviously from the bag on the right. And so let's say John takes a sweet from the bag of candy and so he notes his color and then he replaces it, right? So he does this 10 times and he finds that he obtained a red candy on four occasions. And so the relative frequency here of the event is the red sweet was chosen four times out of 10, right? Because if you're doing this four times, you get a red candy, right? Then that's four out of 10. Very simple for you to understand with this example and as well as the example of the passing cars, right? That's the relative frequency. So he then carried out the experiment another 10 times, right? John did, and combined his results with this first trial. He found that he had obtained a red candy, right? Red sweet out of five out of the 20 occasions. So the relative frequency of the event is that a red candy was chosen five out of 20 times. Again, very simple elementary examples here for you to be able to understand how simple this concept is, right? So this continued with the recordings of combined results after every 10 trials and then they were plotted on the graph. And so let's take a look at relative frequency versus theoretical probability. So we have a formula there to the right hand side. We have a relative frequency equals number of successes divided by total trials. And so then we have the theoretical probability. So the theoretical probability is a probability that is expected, right? For example, when I flip a coin 100 times, I expect tails to come up 50 times and heads to come up 50 times, right? That's a theoretical probability, which is, you know, 0 0.5 or one half, because all you have is two separate outcomes. And so let's say you had a coin, right? That you flipped and it had three sides to it for whatever reason, right? A magic coin that is unique and has three different sides to it, right? And you were to flip it a hundred times. So the probability of that is, you know, 30% or 33, 33, and 33, right? 33% of the time you would get, you know, one side, 33% of the time you'd get the other two sides, right? Because that's broken down to the, you know, actual 100%, right? 100 times. So the theoretical probability would be one third, right? Because you have the ability for each one of those three different angle sides of the coin to show up at any given time. All right, so let's look at the experimental probability versus the theoretical probability. Experimental probability is a result of an experiment, right? Let's say for the sake of an example here, the candy in the bag, right? So the experimental probability would be drawing candy out of the bag and then recording the results. And so theoretical probability is calculating the probability of it happening and then not actually going out and experimenting, right? So the calculating of the probability of drawing a red candy out of the bag. So you're not necessarily, you know, doing the actual, you know, experiment. So that's the theoretical probability, right? Where the experimental probability, you're actually doing the results. You're actually doing the experiment, right? And so... That's the difference there between the experimental and theoretical probability. Okay, so by now, you should have an understanding of what these two are here, right? As far as for the uh, relative frequency and versus the theoretical probability, right? 
where obviously we're working with theoretics, with the theoretical probability. We don't know yet. We're just kind of making an estimation. The relative frequency is what we're using based on an actual formula, right? So that's going to be here for relative frequency, and we'll see you on the next one.